mainstream TV news media in the United States has been moving away from real journalism and real news, starting with little baby steps, since the late 60s and early 70s. Sure, in the 80s, things were okay, but we were still slowly heading towards what we have now. Nothing kick-started the current state of faux news more than the combined elements of internet media, tabloids, and most of all, the merging of television media that created a media hexopoly in the United States. This especially became apparent after 9-11. Mainstream media wants a part of that huge viewership, that instant gratification, that stuff you see in The Inquirer, Infowars, Huffington Post, Breitbart, Rebel Media, The Guardian after 2008 when it switched to Scott Trust Media, PJ Media, Occupy Democrats, and many, many others. This cesspool of a hexology is what we get from all these mergers. For years, many people, usually on the left, have talked negatively about all these mergers, but then there's always a bunch of people, usually on the right, who say, well, that's not a bad thing. It lets media reach more people. That's the great thing about capitalism. I'm saying to myself, yeah, great beauty. That's just special. Beauty, eh? Well, we've reached that point where people are no longer satisfied, and it's hard to find a decent news source unless you just go to the old uh, reliable, like PBS and NPR, and even those aren't as good as they used to be. But they're still better than the alternatives, most of the time. I mean, if you just want a quick overview of things that are happening without too much opinion interjected into it. But this problem is kind of widespread. It, it involves any types of businesses that have had a whole bunch of mergers. And you can go just about anywhere in the US and find these strip malls with the same stores selling the same shit, beckoning for you to buy the same products you can find everywhere else. But you know, you have so many choices now, with fewer parent companies to choose from. You know, why not just get uh, an Amazon Prime account and just get it over with, so you can have a better selection anyway, since store employees often don't know hardly anything about the products they're selling. It's like how you can have 500 channels on TV and not really have anything to watch. Oh, but you have 500 channels of shit, you should be happy. For years, people who like news and actual journalism have been able to turn to NPR and PBS and get reporting that's mostly factual, mostly nonpartisan, mostly real, instead of primarily having opinion pieces like MSCNNBCBS Fox, which sometimes, unfortunately, includes faux news. Unfortunately, real news doesn't bring in viewers. It doesn't bring in high numbers. It doesn't bring in advertising. It doesn't bring in money. That's why it usually has to be backed by something that doesn't have any sort of political or financial agenda. Otherwise, it ends up becoming more like tabloid news. And unfortunately, a lot of right-wingers out there, not all of them, but a lot of them really don't like PBS or NPR and think they should be defunded. And that sure doesn't help with them either. So even those news sources have gotten a hint more towards either the left or towards corporate interests as a result. Thanks, Republicans. Oh, but not all Republicans. And now that people are getting tired of the type of sensationalism they find on mainstream media, they're now finding alternative media to find sensationalism on, you know, from Sources, like I said earlier, like Infowars. Alex Jones, the Texas Twister. Alex Jones, welcome. It is good to be here with you, Max. All right, David Korn of Mother Jones tweeted, quote, Trump is the Infowars president. Of course, uh, quoting Infowars, your site, your show, your thoughts. This is one of the only times that the mainstream dinosaur corporate fake news media is actually accurate. The truth is Trump resonated with the populism that InfoWars resonates with. And so the very tie that's lifted InfoWars lifted Trump. America uh, having a lot of confidence and having a good time and being into fast cars and, you know, great looking women and fully automatic weapons. I mean, who doesn't love that? Huffington Post, Breitbart, Rebel Media, The Guardian, 
PJ Media, Occupy Democrats, and a shit ton of others. And then there's all the countless ranting channels here on YouTube, including mine. So does anyone remember this? Right, but uh, uh, of the nine guys running, who do you think was best? Do you think he was the best? The most impressive? Uh, the most impressive? Yeah. Uh, I thought Al Sharpton was very impressive. Thank you. Uh, I, I enjoyed uh, uh, his way of speaking. I think oftentimes the person that knows they can't win is allowed to speak the most freely. And uh, uh, because otherwise shows with titles such as Crossfire. Crossfire. Or Hardball or I'm going to kick your ass or uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll jump on it. it, it in, in many ways, it's funny, you know, and, and I... I made a special effort to come on the show today because I have uh, privately amongst my friends and also in occasional newspapers and television shows <laughs> mentioned uh, this show as being uh, uh, bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, well, and, and I wanted to, I felt that that wasn't fair and I should come here and, and tell you that I don't, it's not so much that it's bad as it's hurting America. <laughs> So I, I wanted to but come here today let me, and say, wait, wait, no, I just, let me, here, here, here's just one, what I wanted to tell you guys. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> stop, 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 stop hurting America. Okay, now. Let me, and and let come me work you. for us because we, as the people. How do you pay? The people, not, not well. Better than CNN, I'm sure. But you can sleep at night. <laughs> See, the, the, the thing is, we need your, your help. You're, right now, you're helping the politicians and the, 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 the corporations, and we're left out there like to mow our lawns. You just said we're too rough on them when they make mistakes. No, 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 you're not too rough on them. You're part of their strategies. You're partisan, um, what do you call it, hacks. Wait, John, wait, like, let, me, so, let me tell you something valuable that I think we do that I'd like to see you Something do. valuable? You do, yeah, no, well, yeah. it's, it's I nice. Would like when, to, I would when like politicians, to hear it. When, uh, and I'll tell you, when politicians come on... Yeah. It's nice to get them to try and answer the question. And mm -hmm. in order to do that, we try and ask them pointed questions. I want to contrast our questions with some questions you asked John Kerry. If, if, you want to, if you want to compare your show to a comedy show, you're more than no, no, welcome but here's, to. No, no, here's, here's the point. If, if, Kerry that's, doesn't have, if that's your goal, no, it's not. I would name for here's, us. I'd name for Here's Seinfeld. the problem. That's Kerry a very good show. Kerry won't come on this show. He will come on your show. Let me suggest right. why he wants to. Well, come we on have this civilized show. discourse. Well, here, here, here's, here's an example of civilized discourse. Here are three of the questions you asked, John. Yeah. You have a chance to interview the Democratic nominee. You asked him mm -hmm. questions such as, quote, How are you holding up? Is it hard not to take the attacks personally? Yeah. Have you ever flip flopped, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. Didn't you feel like you got the chance to interview the guy? Why not ask him a real question instead of just suck up to him? Yeah, how are you holding up is, uh, is a real suck up. And, uh, uh, I actually was giving him a hot stone massage. It as, uh, sounded that way. <laughs> as we were doing it. it did. You know, it's it's interesting to hear you talk about I felt my responsibility you. to the you know, I, I didn't realize that and maybe this explains quite a bit no, the opportunity is that the news organizations look to Comedy Central for their cues on integrity. So <laughs> right. um, no, what what I would suggest is when you talk about you're holding politicians' feet to the fire, I think that's disingenuous. I think you're How are you holding up? I mean, come on. You no, 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 no. I don't. But my come my on. role isn't. I don't. Well, you think. can ask him a real question, don't you think? Instead of saying, you know, I don't think I have to. By the way, I, I also asked him, you know, where you in Cambodia, but I didn't really care, because <laughs> I don't care because I think <laughs> I it's <can> stupid. <laughs> well, but, but my my point is this: mm -hmm. if your idea of uh, confronting me is that I don't ask hard hitting enough news questions. We're in bad shape, fellas. We're here to love you, not confront you. No, 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 but, but what no, I'm saying nice. is, is this. I, I'm not. I'm here to, to confront you because we need help from the media, and they're hurting us. And it's, yeah. the, the idea if is... The, if the indictment, like, let me get this straight. If the indictment yeah. is... Uh, if the indictment is, and I, I have seen you say this, that yeah. uh, Crossfire reduces everything, as I said in the intro, to right. left, right, black, white. Yes. Well, it's because, see, we're a debate show. It's like seeing the no, Weather no, Channel. No, 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 that'd be great. A storm I would love to see a debate show. a 24 hour day where we have each side on as best no, we can. No, no, get no, no, no. That would be great. And have to, them fight it out. To do a debate would be great, but that's like saying pro wrestling is uh, John, a show John, about John, athletic John, competition. I, I think you're a good comedian. I think your lectures are boring. Let me ask you, let me yeah. ask you a question on the news. Now, this is theater. I mean, it's, it's it is, obvious. No, no, it is. How old are you? 35. And you wear a bow tie. Yeah, I do. I do. So, I do. so this is... No, no, I know, I know. So You're right. No, no, let me just go. Now, come on. And come listen, on. I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that you're, that, not, you're not a smart guy, because those are not easy to tie. But the thing difficult. is that this, you're doing theater, 
when you should be doing debate, which would be great. Well, do no, so it's it's not, not honest. And what you do is not element, honest. What you do is partisan honest. hackery. And I'll, and I'll tell you, you why I, I know Kerry it. You on your show, and you sniff his throne, and you're accusing us of partisan hackery? Absolutely. You're You've a, got to be kidding, man. You're on CNN. And you say. My, the show that leads into me is puppets making crank phone calls. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Well, I'm just saying, there's no reason for you, when you have this marvelous opportunity not to be the guy's butt boy, to go ahead and be his butt boy. Yes, that no, is embarrassing. I was absolutely his butt boy. I was so far, you would not believe what he ate two weeks ago. You know, the interesting thing that I have is, you have a responsibility to the public discourse. And you, you fail to to miserably, school, I think. You need to go to one. The, the thing that I want to say is, when you have people on for just knee-jerk, reactionary talk... Wait, I thought you were going to be funny. Come on, be funny. No, no, I'm not going to be your monkey. Um, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I watch your show every day, and it kills me. I can tell you love it's it. So, oh, it's so painful to watch. Um, you know, because we need what you do. This is such a great opportunity you have here to actually get politicians really John off Stewart? of their marketing anyway? and strategy. Yeah, it's someone who watches your show and cannot take it anymore. <laughs> I just can't. What's it like to have dinner with you? It must I'm be just... excruciating. Do you like lecture people like this? Or do you come over to their house and sit and lecture them? And, you know, they're not doing the right thing. That they're missing their opportunities, evading their responsibilities. If I think they are, look, <laughs> I would want to eat with you, man. That's horrible. I know, and you won't. But the thing we I want to get to. We did promise naked pictures of the Supreme Court. Yeah, we did. No. Let's get to those. Why which can't, are in this book, why which can't is a we very just talk? Book. Please, I beg of you guys. I please. think you watched understand? too much Crossfire. We're going to take a quick no, break. No, no. Welcome back to Crossfire. We're talking to John Stewart, who was just lecturing us on our moral inferiority. John, you're bumming. Out. Tell us, what do you think of the Bill O'Reilly vibrator story? No, oh. I'm sorry, I don't. Oh, okay. What, what do you think? Uh, let me change the subject then. Uh, Where's your moral which, outrage on this? <laughs> I don't have any. Uh, I which, know. Which candidate is supposed to provide you better material? I'm sorry. Which candidate do you suppose would provide you better material if he won? Mr. T. I think he'd be the funniest. Uh, well, I don't, do you have a stake in it that way? As a, not just a citizen, but as a professional comic. Right. Which I hold have, to be much more important than a, as a citizen. Well, there you go. Uh, well, who would provide you better material if you suppose? I, I don't really know. I, it's kind of not how we look at it. We look at the, the absurdity of the system provides us the most material. And that is best served by sort of the, uh, the theater of it all. You know, which, by the way. Thank you both, because it's been helpful. <laughs> but, but if, if Kerry gets elected, is it good? I mean, you said you're voting for him. You obviously support him. It's uh, mm -hmm. clear. Will it be harder for you to mock his administration if he becomes president? Now, why would it be harder? Because the support, only way it would uh, be harder is if his administration is less absurd than this one. So in that case, if it's less absurd, then yeah, I think it'd be harder. But uh, I mean, it'd be hard to top this group. I mean, quite frankly, uh, in terms of absurdity and their world uh, matching up uh, to, to, to the one that, you know, it was interesting, I, I, President Bush was saying, you know, John Kerry, his rhetoric doesn't match his record, but I've heard President Bush describe his record, his record doesn't match his record. So, you know, I don't, I don't worry about it in that respect. But let me ask uh, uh, you guys again a question, because we talked a little bit about, you know, you're actually doing honest debate and all that. But after the debates, where do you guys head to right afterwards? The men's room. Be right after that. Right, home. Spin Alley. Home? No, Spin Alley. What are you talking about? You mean at these debates? Yeah, you go to Spin Alley, the place called Spin Alley. Mm -hmm. Now, don't you think that for people watching at home, that's kind of a drag? That you're literally walking to a place called Deception Lane? Like, it's <laughs> Spin Alley. It's, don't, don't you see, that's the, the issue I'm trying to talk to you guys? Well, I actually believe, I had a lot of friends who worked for President Bush. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to college with Neither somewhere. of us was ever they, in the Spin Room, actually. They, no, I did. I went to Larry King's room. They actually believe right. what they're saying. They want to persuade you. That's what they're trying to do by spinning. But I don't doubt for a minute these people who work for President Bush, who I disagree with and everything, they right. believe that stuff, John. This is Here, not here's a lie or deception at I all. Think they, they believe, believe in him. I think they believe. Just like I believe in my guys. I think they believe President Bush would do a better job and I believe the Kerry guys believe President Kerry would do a better job. But what I believe is they're not making honest arguments. So what they're doing is, in their mind, the ends justify uh, John, the means. I, 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 I hate so, so at all. I, I, mean, I do think you're more fun on your show. Uh, just my opinion. But can, can okay, you just, sex. John Stewart goes one you know on one with his fans. Though? You're as big a dick on your show as you are on any show. <laughs> Now you're getting into it. I like that. Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back. Uh, some questions from our audience. Yes, sir. What's your name? What's your Hi, name? Where my name's from? David. I'm from Boston. Hi, David. Uh, my question is, what do you think the hump on GW's back during the debate was? Say it again. What do you think the hump on George's back during the debate was? 
the hump on his back. Oh, you're not familiar? This is a uh, conspiracy theory. Can I take this one? Yeah, please. It was nothing. His suit was puckering. A lot of people believe he had one of these in his ear. If he was being fed lines by Karl Rove, he would not have been so inarticulate, guys. It's a myth. Um, it's not true. There's a huge myth out of the West about this. Mr. John Stewart. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Renee from Texas. Why do you think it's hard or difficult or impossible for politicians to answer a straight, simple question? I don't think it's hard. I just think that n nobody holds their feet to the fire to do it, so they don't have to. They get to come on, you know, shows that don't... Were they too easy on them? Yeah. Not Ask easy. How you hold you began and stuff by like saying that. we were too hard on people and too All difficult right. or contentious. And that I think you're... Know. Yeah. All right. John Stewart, come back consistent. soon. <laughs> John Stewart, uh, good of you to join us. Thank you very much. The book is America. This is why people loved John Stewart. This was 12 years ago. People saw some of the problems in media back then, and what's really sad is that Comedy Central had better news than MSCNNBCBS Fox. Granted, I mean, they still inserted their opinion all over the place. A lot of them were opinion pieces, but John and his staff actually seemed to have the best interest of the American people at heart. They didn't seem to be nearly as much concerned with trying to keep the status quo so people would buy the products during the commercial breaks. They didn't seem to be interested in just trying to make people scared of sensationalist things in sensationalist ways. And they didn't seem quite as interested as a lot of other media sources in trying to pit one political group against another one. I mean, they had, they obviously had some elements of that in there too, but it just wasn't as bad. You know, actually caring about things like war, poverty, homelessness, real pay gaps, corporate corruption, government corruption, and all the things that mainstream media tries to avoid talking about directly as much as possible. I want to thank those of you who left comments on my videos regarding what we should do about mainstream media. Some comments made me consider other options, some made me hunker down, but any way you go about it, you help me get a more solid position. To me, here in the United States, each one of the six companies in the Hexopoly should be required to have a news channel or, at the very least, get tax credits, major, major tax credits for having a news channel, or maybe they could be given a tax penalty if they don't have a news channel, and those news channels would not be allowed to make any money. And you might say, well, that's outrageous! And it might be outrageous if we didn't have the outrageous situation of the hexopoly that we have to deal with. That's what's outrageous. We should never have let that happen. But we did, and now we're stuck trying to find an answer. I think we need to figure out standards for what we're going to call news and what we're going to call infotainment. Or just saying opinion pieces. We don't do news, we do opinions. Or you could say tabloid news or something like that. But you can't just call it news unless it's primarily just bringing up facts of what is going on. If a news channel is to be called a news channel, then at least, like, 75% of what they put out there should be actual news. If a company's main squeeze is the news, and it is actual news, they should be able to make money from that news any way they want. If a company's main squeeze is entertainment, they should be able to make money off that entertainment any way they want. If a company is larger than a certain amount, and that amount could be debatable, and especially if they are part of the hexopoly, then the news channels they put out should not be able to make any money. And if they don't want to put out a news channel and they just want to put out infotainment instead, then they should be totally free to do such. They just can't label it news. Granted, this could lead to a lot of media companies just dropping the idea of having any sort of news channels at all and you wouldn't be able to get news on television, just infotainment, but at least people would know that's what it is. And I understand a number of other options that people have talked about, like starting journalistic standards. And the media that comes to those standards should be able to wear it loud and proud that they come to those standards. And yes, that would help, but I don't think that alone would really take care of this problem. I think it would be a good thing to put on top of everything else, 
The problem is money. Like Cindy Lauper says, money takes everything. if we were to focus just on journalistic standards, eventually those things would be stretched to oblivion. I'm not saying that we shouldn't start journalistic standards. I think that would be a good thing. And it shouldn't be reliant on the government. That would be a very difficult thing for the government to do anyway. That's simply not going to stop some of the problems associated with these companies that have been allowed to get so huge and to be such a hexopoly onto the public. I mean, really, these are corporations that have no vested interest in putting out content that actually puts the American people first. No vested interest in getting people to think about things that could be beneficial. No vested interest in getting people to question things that would be beneficial. No vested interest in getting people to question and look at corruption anywhere. These companies want to promote the status quo because it means more consistency for them in the market. To me, that's where we need to hit them. Right in the place that counts. And because they're so huge and have a hexopoly, the only way we can really hit them there is if the government does it. You may disagree, but in all honesty, you'd be arguing one of those, well, society doesn't have to fallacies. Look, humans are humans. They're not going to suddenly become other creatures no matter how much you think they should. The reality is that we're simply not going to stop everyone from watching all television. That's a fact. That's not conjecture. The big six own television. If you just stop watching one type of thing from the big six, but watch a number of other things from the big six, that's not going to hurt them and it's not going to make them change their ways. That is the problem with monopolies, duopolies, and in this case, hexopolies. I mean, sure, as time goes on, people are going to watch less television. Television will eventually go by the wayside. But until then, trying to stop people from watching it while it's still pretty popular is like trying to get everyone to stop eating meat. Yeah, it's on that kind of level. It really is. I don't think some people really think that much about how powerful media is. I know that many of you are really against getting the government involved in any of this, but sometimes the government is necessary to get certain things done. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't be able to put out what they want. They just have to come to certain standards if they're to call themselves certain names. You can put out what you want, just don't call it this or that. Now, I am saying that companies like the big six should be coerced a little bit into you know, putting out some news, real news. They can choose not to do it, but then they won't get the tax benefits or they might have to pay some sort of tax penalty. Um, something to make them go, oh, well, this would probably be better if we did this. Besides, it gives them positive publicity anyway. But if they don't want to do that, you know, then they can put out infotainment channels and they can't call it news. You could say that's censorship, but we have a rating system already. We already have a number of things in place that says what media can and can't put out. If we can go into stupid things like that, oh no, the person said shit or fuck or asshole. Oh no, you can't put that on the air. Not if children are watching. If you can do that shit, then you can do this. To me, we need to revamp the entire rating system as well, but that's for a different video. The idea that a kid seeing someone nude in a movie is just some terrible thing, but hearing a bunch of swear words is really bad. They can see all the violence and all the gore as possible, and that's okay. But if there's a sexually suggestive scene, oh no! Yeah, I mean, this system is fucked up. And the things that I'm talking about in this video as to what could be done to help mainstream media when it comes to news. Um, yeah, this could be abused, this could be messed up, but to me, we need to at least try to do something. Uh, to me, we also need to fix the rating system, as I said, uh, and that's probably for another video. So. so, what you've watched is not news, it is my opinion, it is political commentary, and it's nothing more. So, thanks for watching.